everyone. Hi, Scott. Hi, Jennifer. How what are you are doing? We? I'm good. I'm doing good. well. Good. What are we talking about today? Today, we're going to talk about giving a sales presentation and how this is different than giving, let's say, a presentation where you are informing an audience. This could be trying to persuade and sell to an audience. Yeah. It's um, something that a lot of the people we coach have to do. I, I do want to say, though, that all talking is talking. So when we say we're going to talk about sales presentations, a lot of this is kind of fundamentally just good speaking. And for, for some reason, I think in the sale, the sales presentation realm, people sometimes get drawn into the worst of presentations, right? Do you know what I mean? Can you elaborate? Well, yeah, I, the, I'll tell you the story. I was looking at getting some solar panels put on the roof of our house. This was a couple years ago, and I still remember the sales call, <laughs> and not for good reasons. <laughs> I bet. But this very nice gentleman showed up. He was professionally dressed, and he had this packet of great point of sale material. Um, I'd even sent him some data from our energy company so he could come and actually show some data as to, well, how much time might it take, for instance, to recoup our investment based on our energy use and all that kind of stuff. He came in and he proceeded to walk me through probably 40 minutes of monologue. Oh everything about our solar panels in this company kind of <laughs> presentation. What was going through your head? Well, I, as a, as a pr presentation coach, I used it kind of as a study case. I was wondering <laughs> how long can he talk about stuff that he doesn't know, truly know is relevant to me or not? Yes. That's the key. And it was like 40 minutes. Oh my gosh. And you have such through... patience. <laughs> It was, uh, but you know what? I'm like, so many people sit patiently through that kind of thing, whether it's a sales presentation or not. But what's interesting about the sales presentation is it's one of those presentations where it should more obviously be conversational in nature. Yes, because... Well, what? Because what? Do you know what I'm thinking? Well, how can we give a sales presentation where we are trying to provide solutions if we don't even know what the problem is? We yeah. don't even know what their specific pain point or our problems are. Yeah. How can we give a successful sales presentation? Yeah. And sometimes... That's a great point. And I would go even further in saying that when you, let's say you've done your research and you've had a conversation on the phone and then you go have that talk with them. You said, I, I know what your problem is and I prepared all this stuff. I, my feeling is there's still always things that you, you can gather information and do discovery and get a sense of what your client needs and they'll still have thoughts and reactions that you just possibly, you can't possibly predict. Mm. So you've got to be ready to pivot with them. You've got to, it's got to be much more, instead of you pushing your product and its features and benefits at them, it's got to be what really matters to you in this moment about what I'm saying about this product. Well, yes, yes. And there's another element I feel we need to discuss because if, if we are doing a sales presentation, and Scott, to me, this is more of a one-on-one -on -one conversation, or maybe it's- it, Kind of a small group, maybe. It, it's a small group, yes. If a relationship, if trust has not been started to, to be built into this conversation, where is it gonna possibly go? Yeah. Yeah. So I feel that that foundation needs to first take place also because they're not going to purchase 
they're not going to work with that person unless they feel a connection with them. Right. Well, and that's what it was. That's what I was thinking as you were saying trust, because many of us go back to content. So how do I get them to trust me? Well, let me, you know, show you this sheet of paper with all these logos on it. These are all the companies we've sold to in the past. Yeah. And that stuff matters. Don't get me wrong. I think some of it's better presented via, you know, written materials and things like that. But what you're talking about is a kind of trust that has to do with an interaction of a physical, you're talking to somebody, your your the way your face, your posture, your body is. Eye contact. Yeah, all those things mm -hmm. go to establish the kind of trust that's based on rapport. Exactly. And we also need to make sure that we are asking the questions to get to know them and uncover what it is that they need before we just, your example, the guy mm -hmm. just <laughs> dumped all that information on you and it wasn't even relevant. No, I'm you. telling you, it, it could have been the easiest sale because, and here's the lesson for everybody. It had we replayed that and he come in and said, you know, Scott, I, I know you've been looking at our website, you send them some data. What, what is on the top of your mind right now? Yeah, that's what, it. What could, what could I do to help you mm -hmm. by revealing more about what these solar panels that we create can do for you? You know, something like that, and then start gathering that both the understanding of what's really important to me, what's, what's really relevant, what matters, um, maybe also understanding my my knowledge of solar panels so you don't end up talking over my head with technical terms that I don't get, that kind of stuff. You always want to know, you know, how much people understand about the topic and, and what's important to them in it. And at the same time, establish a sense of rapport because we're being conversant. You're you're listening to me. I feel important. Mm -hmm. I feel significant in this, this as means, opposed to just this listening audience person sitting yes, in their hands. It's getting through their agenda of what they feel they must cover during that sales presentation. All of this has to happen at the beginning of the conversation. To me, it's that ping pong effect. You ask a question, you learn, you show empathy. It's this back and forth conversation because if the potential client or customer doesn't feel heard or understood, how is the sale possibly going to happen? Yeah. My, my last thought on this, sometimes when we are giving a sales presentation and we are asked tricky questions or we could be asked a challenging question, we can automatically go into that I have to convince. It's that convince mode. And then we end up rambling and sharing too much information. Here's the tip. If you're ever asked a challenging question during a presentation, ask for more information. Don't go just diving into answering that question. Ask for more information or ask for an example or ask them to elaborate more yeah. because sometimes the way they word that question the first time isn't really how they meant for it to come across well and so get more I, info i love that i want to piggyback off that as a final thought because it goes back to i think everything we've been saying those questions you can if you're in your head going god i hope i can answer this i hope i look like a knowledgeable salesperson yeah. you're missing the point those questions are look at them as clues about what's important to the person you're talking to, your listener. They ask questions, but think of it really as they're giving you information about what they are really interested in. And sometimes you gotta dig deeper. The, the, the question, like you said, isn't worded quite properly. They're, they don't even know what they're asking necessarily. Exactly. They're trying exactly. to. And if you're really good, you're listening so well, you can almost figure out on their behalf what they're really trying to get at. I mean, that's what I think makes really great salespeople. And it that... keeps it conversational. Yeah, right, yeah. right. Important. All right. 
What are we talking about then next week? Mm, next week, we're going to talk about slide design. Yeah. Oh, it's, I love this topic. <laughs> and I hate it at the same time. It's a pain point. However, there are some really cool solutions yeah. to creating slides. Yeah. Yeah. And I love to share. Design is fun. It is. All right, everybody. And, and Jennifer as well. Goodbye for this week. Have a great week and we'll see you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.